With a little love and some tenderness We'll walk upon the water We'll rise above the mist With a little peace and some harmony We'll take the world together We'll take them by the hand called Swimming with the Blowfish, uh, Hootie, Healing, and One Hell of a Ride. I, I wanted to say something that might be helpful to people out there. A, they get to take a look behind the scenes at the band and how we got to uh, the place of sort of uh, popularity in the mid-90s. It also talks about the difficulties, and I want people to know that no matter what you think of someone in the media or uh, in, in the entertainment world, it's rarely all of the story. Describe the ride for you. What's it been like? Like any ride, or like any good ride, you know, it certainly has had ups and downs. And we worked hard for five years playing clubs and uh, toiling away at our craft. and. Uh, suddenly, in 19, the end of 1994, things shot skyward, and we enjoyed five solid years of being at the top and really getting to travel the world, get to do some wonderful uh, things in different places, and having a lot of fans. But that ride also began to come down uh, after 2000, and I was uh, caught up in really the denial that our career was sliding down and that. I uh, had some emotional imbalances that I tried to fix with uh, chemicals and uh, I, even after friends began being worried about me, it took me probably four years to come to a realization and a, and a reality that I was no longer in control and I needed to turn my life over. So struggle with addiction for four years? Yeah, it was uh, drugs and alcohol which led to bad decision making which led to bad places. It's a common story. but. I thought I had control over it, and that was my main main problem, is thinking I was a, a man who is wise in his own eyes. What was rock bottom for the rock star? A moment that was the bottom for me, which turned, turned me, was my four-year-old daughter, who uh, found me passed out in my uh, studio couch one Sunday morning and just said a, f a few words that struck me as profound and uh, perhaps providential. She said, Dad, what are you doing? And she looked at me with all the cuteness of a four-year-old, four-year-old, what are you doing, Dad? Why are you out here and the family's in there having fun? What are you doing? And as she strolled away frustrated, I was faced with those words, what am I doing? And I, I could do nothing else but look upwards and say, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing, do I? <laughs> and uh, it was that day I turned for the first time to ask someone for help, someone for guidance, Tell me where to go, tell me what to do. And uh, that person I asked told me a little bit about his spiritual program, which I ended up uh, following. And it led me back to Christ. It led me back to the Bible. It led me to a transformational life. Share for me practically, how does that look? How do you begin to, to turn things around and get back up? The first bit of that journey was practicing some good old-fashioned self-honesty. I needed to be around people that could help me understand what humility is. And so I started working with the 12-step model that helps a lot of recoverers get through uh, not only chemical addiction, but bad thinking. And uh, that's how I started. I started getting honest and, you know, it, it has worked for me. I didn't like what I saw at all times but maybe that was the point of it. I needed to, to face what I didn't like and acknowledge it and, and move forward responsibly and act. We're hearing how it impacted your uh, young family. How did this impact or the dynamics play out in your musical family? We still remain a band and are still a band because they have allowed me to live out my spirituality. They've just been wonderful. They've even allowed me to bring my more spiritual music on the Hootie stage, which is a fantastic acknowledgement to say, hey, we support this journey you're on, and it's a story that maybe will touch anyone's hearts.